Starting off this countdown, we have the incisions. Here's your final warning. If you're eating anything right now, I suggest you stop. So this story comes from someone that worked at a mental hospital for about five years. The scariest incident that she ever encountered was with a patient that had to have surgery to remove an object that she swallowed. After her surgery, she heard a nurse scream for help. She ran into the patient's room and saw that she had opened up her incisions that were stapled shut. And she was holding part of her intestines in her hands. The patient was covered in blood. Shortly after the incident, the nurse quit. As would I. That is scarring. Also, in Canada, we say intestines. I know a lot of people called me out saying it's intestines. In Canada, we say large and small intestines. So, fun fact. There you go. Moving on to number nine, we have the thumbs. And if you guys are liking this video, then why don't you give it a big thumbs up? So this next nurse was working when a man was brought in for assessment. Apparently the man was super big and tough looking. He kept his head down and didn't say a word. He was handcuffed and he had two officers standing by his side. All of a sudden the man breaks out of his handcuffs and makes a run for it down the hall towards the exit. Thankfully the police caught up to him and tackled him to the floor. And was baffled by the fact that he somehow managed to slip the handcuffs off of his hands. But that's when she noticed something weird about this guy's hands. Upon closer inspection, she saw that the guy didn't have his thumbs. Even the ball socket that attaches the thumb to his palm was removed. He did it himself so that he could easily slip out of police handcuffs. First of all, how didn't the officers see that when they put the handcuffs on him in the first place? Second, ow. In our eighth spot, we have the attacks. So this next individual worked at a hospital for kids that have gone through traumatic experiences and had to be removed from their homes. This hospital was a bit different. The kids lived in like dorm type rooms. Now there was one young girl that had a hate on for her nurse. She would do whatever she could to try and hurt her. One time the nurse entered her room and the girl was missing. She then went to check her closet, and when she did, the girl launched at her from the top shelf of the closet and started clawing at her eyes and hitting her. Needless to say, after that incident, she got a new nurse, and her old nurse was kept as far away from her as possible. In our seventh spot, we have the trauma. It's sad, but a lot of patients in mental hospitals are just victims of trauma. Maybe they witnessed something at a young age and that scarred them for life. That's the case for this next patient. So the patient was a young kid that had dissociative identity disorder. At times, he would just zone out and start screaming, begging his mom to stop hitting him. Like, that is so sad and dark. But, good news, on multiple occasions, the boy has said that he finally feels safe now. Even if he still has moments where he remembers his past trauma, it's good that he finally feels safe. Making our way down the list at number six, we have the dolls. So this patient was a very old lady that would always carry around a doll with her. She was convinced that this doll was legit her baby and that she had given birth to her. She would even talk in great detail about her pregnancy with this doll baby child thing. Well, one night the nurse tucked her in and forgot to tuck in her baby. So she reached to go get the baby and this woman freaked out and just punched her straight in the throat. She then started screaming and yelling about how she was driving too fast and how she destroyed everything that she loved. Well, turns out that this woman did have a baby once upon a time. However, the baby and her husband both passed away in a car accident. That is so sad. I feel so bad for this poor woman. She was so traumatized by an accident and that's why she's so overprotective of this doll. She pretends like it's her real life daughter. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with the broomstick. This next worker had a patient that stabbed himself with the metal jagged end of a broomstick. He shoved it so hard in his stomach that it actually snapped inside of him. And when that happened, he started screaming and digging into his stomach with his fingers to try and get it out. I don't know how the workers there do it. Like, I feel like if I witnessed that, I would have just passed right out. Coming in at number four, we have the snakes. This next patient would always talk about the snakes in his room. He was truly convinced that snakes were living in his ceiling and would slither out and attack him. He also kept saying that the snakes would bite him. Every day, he would have more and more snake bites on his body. Well, Turns out that he was inflicting these wounds on himself. He would pinch and twist his skin until there were small bloody holes in his skin. But he wasn't even aware that he was doing this to himself. He was fully convinced that snakes were biting him. 
In our third spot, we have the bad habits. This next patient had a habit of taking hand sanitizer and squirting it directly into her eyes and wounds. Okay. I've never had hand sanitizer in my eyes, thankfully, but I've gotten it on a tiny paper cut and it burns. So imagine what that would feel like in your eyes. The pain would be a thousand times worse. But this isn't the only thing the patient would do. She also likes to eat tissues. She just pulls tissues out of the box one by one and eats them. As a result, nurses, oh, my teeth hurt just thinking about it. You know when people rub cotton balls together? Oh, sorry, okay. As a result, nurses have to keep sanitizers and tissues away from her at all costs. Oh. In our second spot, we have the prediction. So this story comes from a nurse who worked with a patient that had schizophrenia. One day while she was with the patient, she turned to her and said, oh, how wonderful, you're expecting a baby boy. The woman was taken back because she wasn't pregnant or at least she didn't think she was, but turns out she was pregnant and the patient was right, which is very creepy. I mean, how did the patient even know that? Then when she got her ultrasound done, she found out indeed she was having a baby boy. So the patient got two things right. Now here's where it gets dark. Towards her end of the pregnancy, she was still working at the hospital. One day the patient turns to her and says, Oh no, I'm sorry to hear about your baby. The nurse asks her what she means and she says that her baby isn't gonna make it and the woman was right again. The nurse suffered complications with her delivery and the baby didn't make it. So this woman is psychic or something. Like, how did she know that? That's so creepy. And in our number one spot, we have the fingers. One day, a nurse was making her rounds on the floor when she heard a patient laughing hysterically in his room. When she went to go check on him, she found him sitting in the middle of his room, holding his hand to the sky. It was covered in blood. Turns out that this patient had eaten four of his fingers. The worst part, when nurses rushed in to help, he said, my fingers crunch exactly like baby carrots. Great, so I'm never eating carrots ever again. Starting off this countdown, we have the teeth. The first patient on this list did something so gruesome to herself that you may just wanna stop eating for a second while I tell the story. So according to the nurse that shared this story, this patient was known for inflicting harm on herself. She was known to rip out all of her hair till there was none left on her head or body. That was one of her habits. One day when they went to go check up on her, they found her with blood all over the floor and blood coming out of her mouth. The patient had pulled out most of her teeth, some of which she actually swallowed. The image of her just sitting in her room, bloody teeth surrounding her, has haunted the nurse ever since. Like, ow! And at number nine, we have the appetite. And guys, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up. Obviously, subscribe to our channel because you know what? It really helps us out. So this next patient was placed into a hospital after suffering severe brain damage. She was so bad that she would tend to eat anything around her. She has eaten styrofoam cups, plastic cutlery, plates, and even her clothes. As a result, she was kept in a padded cell with absolutely nothing in it, or else she would try to eat it. One night, though, she plucked out one of her eyes. When nurses found her, they wondered where the eye had went. But I'm sure you know where this is going. They later found that she had eaten her own eyeball. This isn't fake, guys. These are real stories. Coming in at number eight, we have Jane. According to this person that shared the story, Jane was a young lady that had a lot going on, but she wasn't diagnosed yet. The first night at the facility, the staff found Jane in her room in a puddle of blood. Turns out that Jane was picking at the skin on her legs. She managed to pull her skin up on her leg and was degloving her own calf. Jane also had other strange habits Every night before bed, she would perform the same ritual. She would run from wall to wall, touching them in a crucifix pattern. She would do this for hours before finally going to bed. But one night, a worker heard Jane screaming late at night. When he went to go check in on her, she was standing at the doorway smiling. When the staff said, Jane, what's wrong? She replied with, what makes you think you're speaking to Jane? Yeah, no, that's possession. Jane is gone. 
that's the devil you're talking to. In our seventh spot, we have the threat. Honestly, if I worked at any of these places, I don't think I would ever sleep again, especially after hearing this next story. So this next individual worked at a hospital, particularly with older patients. It was around 2.30 in the morning and the staff was going around making sure all the patients were still in their room sleeping. But when they approached the room of an 83 year old woman, they found her sitting straight up in her bed, just staring at the wall. They walked into the room and told her to lie back down and to go to sleep. Then she turned around and said, they're coming for you, dear. Then she started laughing, like she let out an evil cackle. Afterwards, she lied back down and said, I'm going to miss you when they take you. Yeah, I wouldn't sleep anymore if that happened to me. Sleep? Yeah, we don't know her. Moving on, number six, we have the photos. So this story was posted on Reddit by the user Ping. She told the story on behalf of her sister, who is the director of a psychiatric hospital. According to her sister, one of her patients would cut open her arms, legs, and torso. But wait. It gets worse. After doing so, she would take photos of her family and place them under her skin and then close the skin around it. I seriously don't know how the workers do it. Like I would be traumatized if I saw someone do that. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with the biter. Reddit user Omni Kronos shared the story of one of her patients. So she worked at a juvenile psych unit and one of the patients she had was very suicidal and distraught. Because of this, she would tend to bite chunks of skin and flesh out of her own shoulder. She had to be placed in restraints and her head strapped back because of this. Now, here's where it gets interesting. Apparently, three years later, she was on a bus headed to an interview for a graduate psych program. While on the bus, she was approached by a nicely dressed girl. The girl asked her if she worked at a psych unit. She then went on to say that she was the girl that used to bite the skin off of her shoulders. She was doing completely fine now. Like, that's amazing. I'm so happy that the girl is doing fine. Also, it's pretty cool how they just randomly bumped into each other like three years later. In our fourth spot, we have the lost identity. This story starts off with a pretty dark backstory. So this next individual worked at the dental clinic of a psychiatric hospital. One of the patients that she will never forget is a man named Terry. Here's where it gets dark. When Terry was young, he witnessed his sister get killed by their stepfather. As soon as this happened, Terry took on the personality of his sister. He was 100% convinced that he was her. As a result, he would often dress like her. Even now, as a grown man, he would wear little girls clothing. He would also cut pictures out of little girls and attach them to a string in which he would wear around his neck, like a necklace. Even though the pictures of the girls were random and from magazines, he was convinced that they were his friends. Terry was never violent at all. He was just simply a boy who saw a tragic death at a young age that literally broke him. And that makes me so sad. Poor Terry. Moving on to number three, we have the carvings in the wall. This next worker was in charge of keeping an eye on a group of certain patients. One of the patients was a pretty shy guy named Tom. He had trouble speaking, so he often would just not speak at all. He had been in the hospital for about a month now and would often keep to himself. What's weird is that he would often sleep on the floor under his bed. Nurses just assumed he might be frightened and that he felt safer sleeping under his bed. So they allowed him to do so. One morning though, the nurse went to check on Tom and found him staring at the wall. His hands were covered in blood. Some of his fingernails were missing. They removed Tom from his room and she inspected the room to see what went down. The nurse followed the trail of blood to under his bed. When she moved the bed, she was horrified at what she saw. Tom had carved a bunch of drawings into the wall with his fingernails. The drawings were satanic. The freakiest part? Tom had written, he's coming on the wall in his blood. Who's coming? The devil, clearly, so get out of there. In our second spot, we have the bones. Just when you thought this list couldn't get any darker, we got this story. Literally, I was scripting this while eating mac and cheese and wrong decision, stop eating. So this next patient had a tendency to harm himself. In particular, his habit was to break his own bones. Now, you would think that would be extremely painful, but for some reason, to him, it wasn't. In fact, he has broken his left arm more than three times over the years. Basically, as soon as it heals, he purposely breaks it again. And as a result, his left arm barely functions. When asked why he does this, he told the workers he loves the sounds of bones breaking. He also always has broken fingers and toes. He's just constantly snapping and breaking his bones. Now they have restrained him so that he can't harm himself. But still, I could never imagine breaking my own bones on purpose. It's like the scene in The Orphan when she like puts her arm in the ah! If you have seen the movie, you know what I'm talking about. And in our number one spot, we have the eyes. Again, if you're eating something, 
maybe just put your food away. Just wait until this video's done. Believe me, you won't have an appetite after this. So this story was told by a daughter whose mom worked at a neuropsychiatric ward. One night while she was doing the room checks, she came across a very horrific scene. She turned the corner and saw that a staff member was collapsed on the floor. She immediately started doing CPR and called for help. The staff member had suffered a heart attack after seeing what the patient had done. The patient, who suffered from severe postpartum psychiatric disorder, was just sitting on the floor with her own eyes in her hand. Yeah, she gouged out her own eyes and was just holding them. And while the mom was frantically trying to save her co-worker's life, the patient just sat there calmly, smiling, holding her eyes. Starting off this countdown, we have the Danvers Lunatic Asylum. This asylum opened in 1878 in Danvers, Massachusetts. It was part prison and part asylum. At its peak, it had 40 buildings but could only hold 450 patients. But over time, the asylum started accepting more patients than it could handle. At one point, they had over 2,000 patients, but remember, they could only handle 450, so they were severely understaffed and the building was overcrowded. At this point, those at the hospital weren't getting cured. In fact, they were getting worse and worse. In 1939, a total of 278 patients died in the hospital, all from overcrowding. In fact, half the time, patients' dead bodies weren't discovered until days or weeks later. And if that wasn't bad enough, Danvers used to be Salem Village. Ever heard of the Salem Witch Trials? Yeah, a lot of people died on those grounds. Coming in at number 9, we have Alton Mental Health Hospital. Located in Illinois, this facility was built in the early 1900s. Sadly, they used a lot of unethical practices on the patients there, like electric shock therapy, lobotomies, and cold water treatments. This was just an everyday, normal practice at the hospital. Now it's said that this place is extremely haunted. It's still open to this day, and staff, patients, and visitors have all heard unexplainable noises, or doors will just randomly slam closed. One of the creepiest things that happened was to a nurse that worked at the hospital. She was in a room when she heard someone say, who's that? She turned around, but no one was there. Then that same day, a different nurse went into the same room, and she heard someone say the exact same thing. Lastly, a bunch of people have taken photos while visiting patients and have caught images and have caught orbs in their photos. One said the orb had a face of a human man in pain. In our eighth spot, we have the Trans Algany Lunatic Asylum. The Trans Algany Lunatic Asylum began operating in 1964 and was designed to hold only 250 patients. However, it was soon housing more than 2,400 patients which was very problematic. The place was extremely overcrowded and patients started to become more and more violent. Soon they were starting fires and attacking the staff. At one point, patients were locked in cages or chained up to things like animals. On top of that, some were lobotomized with ice picks. Needless to say, hundreds died there. And guess who was a patient there? None other than Charles Manson. In 1994, the asylum was forced to close due to a lot of violations. Now it's said that the building is haunted by the souls of mistreated patients. Moving on to number 7, we have Waverly Hills Sanatorium. Located in Kentucky, this hospital was originally built in 1910 as a hospital for patients with tuberculosis. Sadly, tons of patients there ended up dying from the disease. The hospital did more harm than good. Rumor goes that the hospital was mistreating their patients and conducting experiments on them. It's said that 63,000 deaths took place there. In fact, they had an area in the hospital called the death tunnel or body chute where they would dump the deceased. It's also said that one nurse hung herself in room 502 and in that same room, another nurse died from falling out of the window. Spooky. The hospital closed in 1961 upon the discovery of an antibiotic that could treat and cure tuberculosis. As a result, there was no need for that hospital. Coming in at number 6, we have Creedmoor Psychiatric Hospital. Located in Queens, New York, the Creedmoor Psychiatric Hospital opened in 1912, and it's still open to this day, but it doesn't have the best reputation. In the 1970s, rumors began circulating about patients being mistreated there. They thought they could beat the bad out of the patients. In fact, it's said that one nurse hit a patient in a straitjacket across the throat with a club. 
which ended up crushing his throat and he died from asphyxiation. Shortly after, the asylum was closed and some areas were left to rot. We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with Fairfield Hills State Hospital. Located in Newtown, Connecticut, this hospital opened in 1931 to help two overpopulated mental hospitals in the same area. But surprise, surprise, this hospital quickly became overcrowded as well. And so they turned to unethical ways to cure their patients, such as lobotomies and hydrotherapy. Except they would submerge the patients in ice water, sometimes for more than a day. And they weren't allowed to leave. No, not even if they had to go to the bathroom, they were just stuck there. Needless to say, that made everything worse. Now it's rumored that this hospital is haunted, especially in the tunnels where they used to shuttle patients, the alive ones and the dead ones. In our fourth spot, we have Willard Asylum for the Chronic Insane. This is considered one of the darkest places in America. So it all started back in the early 19th century. Those who didn't have anyone to look after them or those that couldn't look after themselves were left in shelters. And the shelters were becoming more and more crowded. In response, they opened up this hospital for them. The first patient they ever received was an elderly woman named Mary Rote, who was suffering from dementia. As a result, she spent 10 years chained to her bed. Another patient was a young girl who arrived at the hospital in a chicken crate. The hospital soon became a dumping ground for the undesirable. Sadly, a lot of patients did end up dying there. And they were buried on the grounds in graves marked by numbers not names. In 1995, when the building closed, workers discovered hundreds of suitcases in the attic of the building. These suitcases belonged to the patients who one day hoped for freedom, but never got it. Coming in at number three, we have the New Jersey State Lunatic Asylum. This asylum opened up in 1848 under the order of Dr. Henry Cotton, a man who thought mental illness was a result of body infections, which clearly isn't the case. So this belief led to a number of disturbing operations. He would do things like remove patients' teeth, stomachs, ovaries, colons, and bladders, all because he thought that if he removed them, he would just remove the mental health issues they had. But instead, he ended up killing a lot of the patients. Moving on to number two, we have Penhurst Asylum. This asylum opened in 1908 and was meant for people with mental and physical disabilities. But soon, they expanded and opened their doors to orphans, criminals, and people that just didn't have a place to go. But, of course, this led to overcrowding, and it seemed as if the hospital wasn't run in the best manner. If you went there, you were classified as either an imbecile or insane. They truly didn't know how to help patients with mental illnesses. A lot of patients were just strapped to their bed. In fact, one nurse admitted that there was one patient who was bullying others. So what did she do? She asked a doctor what she could inject him with that would cause him the most pain. And that's exactly what she did. She injected him with something and left him to suffer. Not only that, one patient was interviewed and asked what he would like most in the world. He said to get out of Penhurst. Thankfully, it shut its doors in 1987. Number one spot we have Byberry Mental Hospital. Located in Pennsylvania, the Byberry Mental Hospital opened its doors in 1907. It actually started as a working farm for patients before turning into a mental hospital in the 1920s. Much like several other hospitals on this list, overpopulation and lack of funding led to patients being mistreated. In fact, some patients were forced to live with no clothing and not enough food. Typically, the hallways would be filled with sewage. Also, in order to cure the patients, they would be placed in solitary confinement or beat or subjected to electric shock treatments. In 1990, the hospital was shut down after it was revealed how horrible it really was. All right, guys, that's all for today's video. Another huge shout out to Magellan TV. And now let's move on to our comment shout out portion. I'll be shouting out comments from the video Top 10 Dark Things People Did in Mental Asylums Part 2. Why, why, you wanna know my nice name commented when you're performing the show, it makes it so much better. Why, thank you, why, why, you wanna know my. That's an interesting name. I kind of like it though. It's catchy, but thank you. Unicat Productions commented, hey, finally a video I can put on while eating. If you're eating anything right now, you should stop. It's true. Some of these videos, it's like you maybe just not eat anything 
right now because you're just gonna end up feeling really sick. So I was trying to save you. Sorry. Zay next door commented, I just dropped my hot pocket. No, not the hot pocket. Damn, I love those. I hope it's okay. Hope you picked it up, like blew it off, a little five second rule. I don't know. I hope your hot pocket is safe. <laughs> All right, guys, that's all the comments I'm shouting out for today's video. Make sure to comment something down below for a chance to be featured in my next comment shout out. And as always, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to Most Amazing Top 10 for more amazing videos. I've been your host, Lindsay Ivan, and I'll see you when I see ya.